Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. I'm Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from Haleiwa out at the North Shore. And today we have a fun program because we're going to take a look at holiday movies, things that uh, really make us feel really nice during the holidays, which we need. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But first, let me introduce my guest, a uh, very good friend of mine and fellow movie buff, Greg McDonald. Greg, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the uh, thing with holidays, uh, and Greg's a psychologist like I am, that's very difficult, uh, is that there's a lot of great fun and enjoyment happening with many people, but there's a lot of sadness and there's a lot of grief, uh, depending upon your circumstances and how you come into the holidays. So it can be a very positive experience and a very negative uh, experience as well. So, of course, our program is all about finding happiness. So we're going to focus on movies that uh, make us happy. And we're going to take different holidays. I think more movies, of course, focus on Christmas. But we're going to save that till toward the end of the program, that and New Year's. And we're going to tackle some other holidays. And we're going to look at six movies. And we hope you enjoy our conversation. And Greg's going to start us off with a holiday that's really I think very uh, special to the islands, and that's Girls' Day. And he's got uh, the pick of Girls' Day for us. And let me turn it over to you, uh, Greg. Start us off. Okay. Well, Girls' Day is not one of those holidays that I tend to think of as uh, something I've celebrated all my life until I married Junko, who's Japanese, and it's a big deal in Japan. So uh, I thought, okay, Girls' Day, what movie would I pick? And it was kind of easy. It came to me right away. Barbie. And uh, Barbie was one of those movies I probably hadn't planned on seeing because the previews are very cartoonish and um, didn't seem like my kind of movie. But you know me, Ken. You know, I go anyway sometimes, especially if I don't like something, just to see why maybe I wouldn't like it. And it did start out cartoonish for me, uh, although fun. It is absolutely fun. I recommend it highly to everybody. Um, but there was a, sometimes there's points in movies where I feel like the movie took a giant step in a new direction that was totally unexpected. And this movie has several of those, which you wouldn't think from the fluff of the commercials. Near the beginning, there's a dance scene where they're all dancing and having fun. And all of a sudden, Barbie stops, and I think the music stops, and you don't know what's happening, right? And she says, has anybody thought about death? And I thought, holy, holy moly, Barbie <laughs> brings up death, you know, and because uh, she's immortal, right? I mean, as a doll. And uh, just, just that thought, I thought, how creative. Now, where is Greta, the writer, going to go with this? And she takes it into an interesting place uh, where Barbie, and I don't want to get into telling the whole story, but um, if we think, if I think of how feminism affected me going through college in the Bay Area during the heyday of militant feminism, we were pretty much afraid of women. They'd yell at you if you <laughs> opened the door for them and say, well, I'm not helpless, I can do it myself. And it's like, whoa, you know. And I knew that... Greta's a feminist, right? And I thought, oh, okay, this is interesting. So what happens is Barbie's given a choice, God, it's hard to be brief on this, to, um, to, to go out of Barbie land and be a real person. And they put her in, like, Santa Monica, Hollywood. And in Santa Monica, Hollywood, um, she sees how men control everything. And she says, oh, the way to break out of who we are is to learn how to to control like men do because they have it down. So she takes it back to Barbie land and turns all the women into like c c control, like, like men control corporations mm -hmm. and nobody is happy about it. And she realizes it's not working. And the next big turnaround, I thought, where's she going to go with this? The next big turnaround is they introduce the creator of Barbie and uh, Barbie has to, like a therapist, Barbie has to talk to the creator. And she says, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what am I supposed to be? You know, I, 
tried this, I tried that. And I'm paraphrasing all of this. The creator says, that's the way I made you. I made you so you could be anything. And I thought, how interesting. Now it's, you can be anything. You don't have to be a fighter against male domination. You can be anything. And so she, um, she Ken, which, who has been her boyfriend in the storyline, uh, wants to get back in with her. And, she's, and he, she, she rejects him, which she's never done. I'm almost done, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she rejects him. And, uh, but she says to him, she, he says, like, why? What's wrong? And she said, you need to know who you are, which is the same thing that her creator kind of asked her, who are you? And I thought, I thought, okay, this is where I can end it, Ken, because you know me, I can go forever. Uh, I thought, that's an interesting thing, because I thought what Greta did was create feminism 2.0, where it's no longer us against men. It's us, all of us, men and women, deciding who we are and seeing if we can figure it out together. And yeah. that's, that's where I thought the genius of the, the movie mixed all the cartoonish with this great underlying storyline, for me anyway. Yeah, and, uh, and I totally agree. Uh, the director, Greta Gerwig, uh, you know, and Margot Robbie, who really, uh, you know, collaborated with Greta a lot on this movie, the two of them. Uh, did a terrific job, and they they walked a very fine line, which is very difficult for movies. Uh, this movie, like you said, could have been uh, geared toward uh, kids uh, or adults, uh, and somehow they walked the line and satisfied both. Uh, it could be serious or it could be silly. They walked the line in that. Uh, it could have music or not have music. They were doing all this, and especially the one the part that I liked was that they made fun of Mattel, who's behind everything and supplying all the money, and they were able to make fun of their boss and get away with it. Now, that's a really fine line. Uh, so it made it a very interesting movie and a very uh, brave movie. You know, yes. they needed to do this for them to, to step out and give people what they didn't expect it was very brave. And that makes the picture great. So, and I think we're going to see that not only at the Academy Awards, but uh, also interesting on how much money the uh, movie made. I think it made a lot uh, because it reached a lot of people. Terrific. Yeah, let's go on to our, our second movie, which is uh, also something that uh, was totally unexpected. Uh, although it was, uh, we, we, we took a look at a movie, at a holiday that really wasn't a holiday, and that's Groundhog Day. It comes up every 2nd of February, and which is coming up fairly soon in our year that we're filming this. And it's always interesting and it's always fun. It's sort of a tongue-in-cheek type of uh, holiday that we don't get off from work, but uh, we really can have fun with. And the movie takes a much more serious thing by, of course, uh, and most of you may have seen the movie, with Bill Murray, uh, who plays basically a not-so-pleasant guy at the beginning of the movie uh, and holds that for quite a while. And Bill Murray is very great at that. Uh, and he sort of makes himself very unpopular at the beginning of the movie. And then the movie starts over again. The next day, it's still Groundhog Day. And for the rest of the movie, we are just going from one Groundhog Day to the other. And, uh, you know, like you're talking about mentioning death in the middle of Barbie. Well, <clears throat> mentioning repeating one's life during the middle of a movie here. And all of a sudden, we're back at the same plot, at the same thing, with the same music waking you up. And, uh, you know, going through the day, in his case, being a weather person, coming and talking about uh, the weather and uh, whether the groundhog's going to see his shadow, et cetera, et cetera, uh, just keeps playing over and over again. But it's totally different every time because he's different. First, he's really trying to find out what is going on and why is this happening to him. And then he decides, well, you know, I'm doing this. Uh, let me see if I can do this better. And he's trying different things and uh, making the same mistakes and then making different mistakes. And uh, it's that whole process of how can we know each other better, which is great getting back to Barbie. Uh, knowing each other and being ourselves and accepting ourselves uh, 
turns out to be a great movie with really uh, pleasant moments all through it as far as surprises, pleasant surprises, interesting things happening, et cetera. And what did uh, what did you think of it, Greg? Well, it, it was genius, um, and especially Bill Murray. It's a perfect part for him. Um, yeah, I, I thought a slightly different. Uh, I, I I liked the idea that he's this cad who's arrogant and thinks the world should love him, and he's going to do something below his dignity. Which is once again go look at the uh, a Groundhog Day thing, which he thinks is just—I mean, he's way better than that in his estimate. Yeah. Now, the surprise here for me was when he starts waking up with the, at the same time every day, and the same things are happening, and he goes to the same lady for breakfast and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what was very interesting is each of the days were slightly different. At first, I expected. Well, every day will be exactly the same because he's repeating the same thing. But it wasn't exactly the same. Every every day, like you said, he would try something different. So that made, gosh, I don't know, five or six, seven attempts uh, for him to break what I'll call the loop, for lack, lack of a better word. He was stuck in this loop that was repeating every day. The thing that hit me was the bottom line of what he was doing in each loop was trying to control now, remember, he's an egotistical maniac, so he's not used to not being in control. So for me, I was following a story about a man who's running out of ways of being in control. And at the same time, he has this attraction towards um, um, out of Eddie McDowell. Out of yeah. McDowell. Yeah. So did I, by the way. And, <laughs> me too. Yeah. And uh, that the in, in the last scene, it's kind of like he's burned out all of his attempts to control and something in it's like love takes him over and i thought how interesting that this movie was about being in control but love can't be control so he had to run out all his controls until he was open to the fact that i really love this woman and then it had a nice hollywood ending so that's kind of where i took it as uh, along the way it's a joyful movie i highly recommend it but that's just the way i saw his struggle yeah, certainly uh, the idea of not only letting love <laughs> take him where it go, but let him, let his self, let everything go, that control go, and let, you know, let his life live it out and uh, start doing the things that he wanted to do, in addition to, you know, angsting about and, and obsessing about Eddie McDowell, Eddie McDowell's, he, uh, he tried things that he'd never tried before, that he always wanted to, like playing the piano, you know, right. yeah. <laughs> and all that sort of stuff was just great. I mean, uh, terrific. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to the next movie, which uh, Greg picked, and which was a surprise for me because it's a Mother's Day movie, and uh, it was a pretty heavy Mother's Day movie. So let me turn it <laughs> off to you, Greg. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, when I when I when I knew that Mother's Day was going to be the movie I had to pick, I thought, oh my god! Uh, so I immediately, to, to tell you the truth, went to Google. And I and and you can Google in top fifty Mother's Day movies, right? You just but you don't see the movies; you just see what they are. You can see the names of them. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of them, and my one take from all of them was most of the mothers were like abused mothers and struggling to put something right in their life. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but I was struck with how many of the ones that they were considering the best were basically about it, abused mothers. Let me just put it that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so then, then I, when I thought about, uh, well, first of all, I loved this movie, um, Three Billboards. This is the weirdest title, isn't it? Who would have gone to a movie called Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri? So, <laughs> not exactly a movie that you're drawn to by the title. <laughs> anyway, um, and... You know, we're talking about happiness in movies, and this is a movie about a murdered daughter, right? How, how do you make a happy movie about a murdered daughter? And uh, so you meet um, he, he, Frances McDermott's the mother, and she does the typical things when the daughter's been murdered. She tries to get help, and nobody's interested. It's like, it's not a big enough story. And um, 
she decides to take things in her own hands. Now, this is where I think it gets funny and sad at the same time. It's one of those movies that lets you go back and forth. She rents three billboards outside of Bibby, Missouri, and she puts up a message about how <laughs> how the locals don't how the local police department's doing nothing, they don't care, my daughter's dead, da da da. I don't have the exact words, but that's what she said. And everybody was shocked that a woman did that. And the scene that stands out to me is this one. She's invited to come out and be interviewed at one of the signs. Kind of like, well, why did you do that? You know, and uh, the TV people were sort of regular TV people, which is g going for emotion. Have you noticed that? In interview people tend to go for emotion. They, they can get a tear. They, they, uh, they earned their money. So anyway, they were going for emotion. And all she gave them was, excuse me, okay? All she did was give them hell. She swore at them and she told them how, what low lives they were. And the way in which she did it was just, it just came out rapid fire. It was, it was funny. So that's where it got funny, right? Then they leave. And this is, this is what brought the tears to my eyes. This is when I knew this would be one of my favorite movies always. She's alone. And they left some junk around. So she's picking up because the sign is about her daughter. and She doesn't want to have the junk that they left behind, the trash. And she picks up the trash. And then all of a sudden she stops and she looks up. And off in the distance, about 200 feet, is a deer looking at her. And I love it when a director takes the risk that I'm going to explain. No music. They stayed on that scene. Nobody moved in the movie for probably one solid minute. And it's like it, that minute drew you right into what she was feeling. So that for the first time, we've seen her combative. And all of a sudden, you feel her pain. And she says to the deer, I, I know it's you. I know you're there. Oh, my God. Even goosebumps now, as I said that. Um, and uh, so anyway, the movie plays out uh, trying to find... And this is a question for you. It's a, it's a good segue to you. Yeah. The movie plays out uh, her trying to find who did it. And there's some very funny things that she bombs the police department and blah, 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 blah. I won't get into that. The ending, again, was a huge risk. She and a cop who had sort of befriended her with a struggle find out that the murderer might likely be in another town and they get in the car and they're going to go get him. And the final scene is they're in the car and she turns to him and she says, maybe, she, maybe we should turn around and go back. That was the end of the movie. I thought, wow. Well, there was actually there was an agreement. He really asked him if we should go ahead and do this and take this guy out. <clears throat> and uh, he says, I don't know. Uh -huh. I'm not sure. Yeah. And, and he says, are you sure? And he, she says, I'm not so sure either. Right. And it leaves us with that thing, which is, I mean, filmmakers do this, good filmmakers, a lot. They'll leave it up to the audience to decide what they're going to do. Are they going to go ahead yeah. and try to take this guy out? Or are they going to go back? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what the important thing to me was that she was questioning it, that all through the movie, she wanted just, she was angry sure. that her daughter was murdered and raped and, uh, and then totally ignored. Uh, and nobody was coming in up with the killer or anything, or even seeming to try to do that. And she was, she used the word, hell bent on, on getting justice. And all of a sudden, through everything that happened in the movie, uh, he finally is coming to the grips with maybe revenge is not the best idea. Maybe, you know, she's not, she's not there to be, you know, to say no, but she's thinking about it. And that's really the risky part to me and the moving part. And by the way, I would just tagline that with Frances McDormand, who's just an incredibly wonderful actress. That scene that Greg is talking about with the deer, the reason that she's such a great actress is that like Greg says, nothing is happening, but the camera is panning often to her face. And in her face, you see the tears in her eyes begin, and you hear it in her voice when she's talking to the deer, wondering if the deer is her reincarnated daughter, you know, or what part the deer plays. And I'm sitting there, and 
like Greg, I'm very moved. And a lot of it is the actors just being incredibly wonderful uh, and showing us that internal stuff, which most movies don't do. So thank you for uh, recommending that movie. It was, uh, I didn't quite find it as funny as you did, but uh, it certainly was a great movie and well done. Let's go to, because uh, we're running short on time, and it doesn't look like we're going to get to Christmas or New Year's, but uh, maybe I can talk Greg into coming back to pick up those and maybe some other holidays. The fourth holiday we're going to take a look at is President's Day. And the reason I chose that was because we're in the middle of, well, let's put it this way, the presidents and the presidential election coming up is all in the news. And so much of what comes out during an election and during all times is, I don't know how else to say this, but a lot of BS, if you'll excuse the expression, uh, there's a lot of spin. There's a lot of, you know, way to get votes that may or may not be very close to the truth, or at least it's not very not giving us much knowledge about the, the two people involved. Uh, so the American president, and the reason I really was drawn to that, all, all the movies that sort of take place around the presidency, shows us a very human president. President who has uh, been without his wife for his while, his wife passed on, so he's been a, uh, you know, a widower, and he's raising a daughter, and uh, the presidency is a very lonely job. And uh, we get to see, and Michael Douglas is playing the president, uh, him at being very vulnerable. We get to see him behind the scenes, not the stuff that comes out for the television, but the stuff that is him trying to deal with the fact that he's now attracted to a woman, Annette Benning, who is wonderfully attractive in this movie. Uh, and what is he gonna do about this? He's the president. And uh, so what he does is he tries to keep everything private, like most of us try to do when we're maybe in love or, you know, maybe we're not broadcasting it all over the, uh, the world uh, for whatever reasons. And uh, he's trying to find some privacy, which he cannot do. And unfortunately, uh, in politics, too often, if you don't respond to people, they take advantage of it and attack you. And that's what happens. He gets attacked as the president, which we see this all the time in our presidential election. So it's very topical, it's very typical, but behind it all, we see the president as a human being, very well done by Michael Douglas and uh, wonderfully done by his opponent at the beginning, who he eventually is falling in love with, and that Benning, very smart, very capable. Talk about a feminist movie. This is one tough, strong lady, but she's also much more than that. She's also a person with a lot of heart and a lot of caring as well. That's why I picked it. Your reactions, Greg? Much the same. Uh, I, 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 the, the last thing you said kind of impressed me. I, I saw her as smart and uh, feminist, but uh, that gentle side was, uh, I hadn't really noticed that when I watched the movie. And uh, that's really true. She really did a nice job with the uh, two sides of the way she's going to play out her conflict with her job and her boss but but all of the bosses of either one don't want this relationship to happen mm -hmm. right um because she's kind of, she's an environmentalist and uh the president is <laughs> may or may not be but he has to figure out what can he say that will get him elected whether it's in favor of environmentalism or not so he's got that struggle going on <clears throat> and so she pushes a lot on him to kind of open his eyes on, on what's going on. Um, but it, I know you're going to hate me on this. It's the same theme again as what I said before. Um, he, for the president, it's he's trying to control everything. And when he finally realizes he can't control, and he comes to the end of his power of control, he realizes that love is more important. And so he falls in love with her, and it ends with a, a love at the end. So that's kind of what I saw. Um, and it had been a long time since I'd seen the movie. You know, some of these ones that you suggested, um, I hadn't seen for a long time. So uh, I'm going off memory. Mm -hmm. But my memory is I, I loved the movie, but I'd never thought of it before in terms of how their relationship evolved. I think when I first saw it, I was just more interested in the president. 
because I was probably, when did it come out? 95 or something? I don't know. It was pretty yeah. young. Yeah. I was Actually, too- 95. Uh, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, of course, the thing at the end was that, uh, yeah, he, I don't know if he gives up control, but he gives up to love. Well, that's and what I mean. When you give decided, up. He, yeah, he decided to take control at the end where yeah. he just stops being uh, nonverbal and yeah. goes after the people that are going after them and standing up for people who love and people who care about each other and and their right to do that. And uh, he comes out very strong at the end. So he's, uh, you know, it's it's a movie that embraces and looks at us from both sides and uh, doesn't give us easy plot lines of good and bad and they lived happily ever after and all that, but really looking at people and individuals, all of the movies that we talked about. And I think that that's what makes a great movie and certainly a movie that you want to watch over and over again. Yeah. Well, it looks like we're definitely running down on time. And uh, as I was worried about, we didn't get to uh, either Christmas or New Year's, but uh, I'm hoping I can talk Greg into coming back and we'll tackle that maybe some other holidays, maybe uh, in the summer. Maybe that's good because there's always summer movies. We could sort of segue that in, start off with the that and then go to the summer movies, which are always depended upon by the, uh, you know, by the powers to be and the money uh, people on getting them a big return. So everybody going out to the movies uh, in the summertime when everybody's off or at least a lot of people are off. So. Look forward to that and hope you can come back in so we can get to those two movies, Greg, and uh, maybe talk a little bit about the summer movies. Count on me. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know, that's one of the great things is when you have friends that you can talk to them about about anything. And uh, Greg and I love to talk about movies together. And I hope you, uh, whatever you enjoy, whether it be movies or music or art or that, that you have friends that you can talk to about that because i think that's really the way to find happiness and uh with that uh let me say thank you to the uh the staff of think tech hawaii uh of uh of course michael and uh haley and uh and our boss <laughs> much appreciated all your uh your help in putting this on and especially i want to thank the people out in the audience uh and t- tuning in and uh reaching out to find happiness because that's very difficult nowadays. And so every time I see you, we get to talk about something happy, and I enjoy it. And I hope you do too. Hope to see you in uh, two weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll do it then. And in the meantime, for everybody, aloha. <laughs>